the character of God. What is the character of God? In the last video, I asked, does God exist? And I hope we've answered that together. Maybe you're still on that journey. But in this one, I'm asking, what is the character of God? In Mark 11, 22 through 24, Jesus gives us a formula for answered prayer. And it's a pretty simple formula. But as simple as it is, it's also very complex and very dependent upon our belief structure. So first of all, we have to believe that God does exist. Now, to have faith in God, we have to answer that one. Does God exist? But to have faith in God, we have to trust God's character. So what is God's character? And I'm just going to read to you Mark 11, uh, 22 through 24 right now so we can kind of get a glimpse of what the formula for answered prayer is. And starting at verse 22, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, The whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Okay, so the second step in this formula is to not doubt in your heart. So we have to go from a knowledge of God in our brain, not doubting in our brain, okay? We have to get past that level first to not doubting in our heart. You know, Christ tells us uh, in Scripture that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's really important that we push doubt in God out of our heart. Maybe we grew up and didn't have um, a good dad. And so it's really hard for us to have a relationship uh, with God because of that. You know, I don't know your exact circumstances, but, you know, a lot of people do go through that. So throughout the Bible, we're given many characters of God. Um, and those can be found in his name. So, you know, right behind me, I have several characters of God listed. Um, Father, Creator, Supplier. Powerful, Lord God, provider, healer, banner, sanctifier, peace, and the Lord is with me. So and all of those denote his character. You know, he's loving, he is kind, he is merciful, he is full of grace towards us. So that is God's character, and we can trust that. God cannot lie. And if God tells us that our prayers will be answered, then that's his responsibility to answer those prayers, not ours. Our responsibility is to ask. It's his responsibility to answer. You know, when we're toddlers, when we're just children, and we ask our parents for food, it's our responsibility to ask when we get hungry, and it's our parents' responsibility to fulfill that request for food. You know, when you're a, a toddler, you don't know what foods are good for you and what foods aren't, what's dangerous for you and what's not. You know, so you ask your parent, you know, my children ask me, Daddy, I'm hungry. You know, Daddy, can I have this? Daddy, can I have that? I'd go to the refrigerator. If it was something that was good for them, I'd let them have it. You know, and God's the same way. You know, it's our responsibility to ask. It's his responsibility to answer. The power for answered prayer doesn't come from us. The power for answered prayer comes from God. So for the doubt in God's character, the Bible answers that completely. We have to trust that. and We have to get that from our brains into our hearts that God will answer our prayer, that he is a loving father. He is a kind father. He is full of mercy. He is full of grace. And then we have to get the doubt out of our heart, out of ourselves. It doesn't matter whether we feel like we're worthy or not. That's not the case. You know, the case is um, what toddler is worthy to ask their parent for food? 
Hmm? Every toddler is worthy. It doesn't matter if they've just made a horrible mess in the kitchen, in the living room. It doesn't matter what they've done. They're worthy to ask their parents for food or for clothing or whatever the case might be because the parent loves that child and the parent wants to provide for that child. And it doesn't matter if they mess up. The parent knows that they're going to make mistakes. The parent knows that they have to be taught. So that doesn't make, just because you make mistakes doesn't make you unworthy uh, of God's love. It doesn't make you unworthy of God's answered prayer. It's just the opposite. You're still learning. God knows you're still learning. So the responsibility lays with God to answer their prayer, but the responsibility lays with us to believe that God will answer that prayer. And that's something that's amazing. That's something that's beautiful. And God doesn't discriminate against um, prayer requests. You know, uh, I've heard this a bunch. Well, you have to live this way and you have to live that way. And, and you, you know what? Jesus come and said, you can't do it. Jesus told us that we couldn't be perfect. Jesus told us that if you make, commit one sin, you've broken the entire law. And, you know, I see a lot of ministers today that are preaching that um, the secret to prayer is living perfectly according to God's law. And I'm like, man, you just went totally against what Jesus Christ taught us in the New Testament. He said you can't do it. If you've broken one, you've broken them all. So that's where mercy and grace comes in. God loves us. We are his children. Yes, I mean, we do need to walk away from the sins of the flesh um, that have got us in so much trouble. My goodness, you know, uh, uh, like me walking away from the addiction, I had to reach out. I had to ask for help. You know, it was my responsibility to ask. It was God's responsibility to provide the way. So um, I hit a friend of mine up from church um, whose boyfriend um, was is works for Revive, Mason. Love Mason to death. He's, he's a great guy. Um, called uh, Casey up, and Casey said, you know, I talked to Casey for, you know, 15, 20 minutes on the phone. And Casey said, well, Sean, you got to go detox first. So I went to detox for seven days, come out, got out of detox and called Casey up. And, you know, she'd been working all week trying to get me in. And um, my insurance company was like, no, you know, he has a full-time job. And so that night, you know, I picked my daughter, one of my daughters up, Jessica, and take her out to where she has a horse stable. And while she's working her horse, I just felt this peace all over me. And uh, I just started praying to God. And I said, okay, God. You know, um, here's this request. If you want me in Revive, you have to find a way to do it because I've tried. I can't get in. Um, if you want me there, that's great. If you don't want me there, that's great too. And no sooner than I got those words out of my mouth, my phone dings, and it's an email from our corporate office in Dallas, and they had just laid me and 40 other people off. Just instantly. It was an immediate layoff. No notice at all whatsoever. And it automatically qualified me to get into Revive. Called Casey up the next morning, told her what happened. And she goes, awesome. She goes, I hate that you just got laid off, but that means you can come in. How soon can you get here? So I packed my stuff and there I went. That was God's blessing. It was my responsibility to ask. It was his power to answer. So, and that's what we have to get over, get over is, is we have to ask and we have to push the doubt in God out, get it into our hearts that God is loving, kind, and merciful, and push the doubt in ourselves out because it's not our responsibility to um, answer that prayer. It's God's responsibility. So the power is not on us to answer it. That's God. So that should take care of those two doubts for you. And really think about that. Really get this into your heart. Open your Bible up. You know, uh, search out the names of God. Search out prayers. Read Mark eleven twenty two through 24. Now, that's on this one right here. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to do another one. This is a three-step formula that Christ gives us in Mark 11, uh, 22 through 24. And tomorrow, I'm going to do the third video on it. Uh, so, tune in tomorrow as well. 
And just remember, you are loved, you are important, and you are valuable. And I'll see you on the next video.